entrepreneurs, academics and scientists, including Elon Musk, who wants the training of intelligence halted for at least six months. We're going to dig deep into this uh, over the next 20 minutes or so in the company of two people who know a thing or two about it. Joining me is the tech investor, Evan Burfield, the Evan Burfield, I do beg your pardon, the author of Regulatory Hacking, uh, a playbook for startups. He's in Texas. And Professor Gary Marcus is in Vancouver. He's the Professor Emeritus at New York University and author of Rebooting AI. Professor, let me start with you. Um, clearly, with such advances that we're seeing, we have to set some guardrails. Who do you think should be in charge of that? Uh, were we both professors? I think that we need global governance for AI. I think that we have a lot of <coughs> patchworks right now, almost balkanized. Um, the worst case from the company's perspective and the world's perspective is if there's 193 jurisdictions, each deciding their own rules, requiring their own training of these models, um, each run by governments that don't have much specific expertise in AI. So what I called for in an Economist uh, editorial earlier this week and in a TED uh, talk earlier this week was to have a global system modeled on something like the International Atomic Energy Authority, where the world comes together and says, we have a new threat here. Um, it's really a new set of threats, and we need to work together on this. So I think the number one thing is it should be global. And the number two thing is it can't be just um, policy, but it also has to be a research side, because we need to invent new tools like we had to invent for fighting spam and cyber warfare and so forth. There's so many different threats, as you mentioned, around misinformation, cybercrime, and so forth. So we need to have a kind of standing organization that's global and well-financed to try to build tools to mitigate those threats. So Evan Burfield, uh, there are many, many people who, who just want to press the pause button until we work out some of these things. But I can already see and I've heard uh, the reasons why that probably isn't possible, and, and that is because not everybody will stop, and people are worried about losing competitive advantage. So how do we best go about this? Yeah, I, I think that's exactly right. Um, you know, the, the challenge with a moratorium is that it's incredibly hard to enforce. Um, the responsible actors would be more likely to, to follow it. The irresponsible actors wouldn't. But that's actually not so much my concern with a moratorium. There's absolutely questions we need to be asking about the governance of AI, about what industry can do, what government can do. Uh, I think the letter did spark a conversation. Schumer is working on a new AI bill here in the US. Rumor is McCarthy is working on a Republican version. But what I think is actually much more important is to start to have the conversations about how we prepare our society, our economy, uh, our political system, democracy itself, for all of the implications of AI that are coming one way or another. And I suspect we'll see a year from now, we'll go, this was less impactful than we thought. Five years from now, it will be an absolute tsunami of upheaval. And we have this window right now where we can have this conversation and we can get creative and I think we've got to use it. And a moratorium gives us this false sense of security that we have control and can stop it versus figuring out how we ride this tsunami and, and try to direct it in a much better direction. Professor Marcus, did we did we learn anything from the, the the last technological advance, the advance of the internet, of social media? Are there lessons from that which we, let's face it, we didn't do very well that?